You are Locked On Seminoles, your daily podcast on the Florida State Seminoles, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome back to another edition of Locked on Seminoles. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Drake here, and today it's game day. We have the Wake Forest Demon Deacons heading down to Tallahassee, and I have Dave here to give me a prediction and also what he wants to see from this game in our short-form game day episode. David, que pasa, mi amigo? Oh, Drake, I woke, up, I woke up on the right side of the bed today and kind of you know had an epiphany. I was going to just go on a tirade about how much I hate Wake Forest. And and that's like, I don't know about you guys, that's increasing for me by the day. Like, that fan base just sucks. Um, uh, here's what I'm going to say about Wake Forest, okay? Before we get into prediction and preview, what any of that, this little ride that Wake Forest has been on the last few years is just adorable. It really is. Like, good for you guys. It's cute. Um, it's over. Uh, Riley Skinner is going to graduate this year or next year or some year. And be gone. And then you guys are just I'm gonna say next year, dude. Not that he's he's coming back for another year. And when that happens, they're screwed again, just like they always were since the beginning of time before that. Um, Wake Forest isn't good. It's not a football school, never will be. Um, and we should be approaching this game as such. This is one of those games that, like, when we're good at football, should be circled on the calendar as in who are we looking ahead to the following week? Because that's exactly what Wake Forest is, the Vanderbilt of the ACC. That is some really, really strong words for an offense that basically mm-hmm. also took Clemson. They scored 45 points on Clemson. But before we know, get into the nitty gritty of it, folks, the line right now for, for the FSU Wake Forest game is at minus six and a half. I mean, all lines are brought to you by our friends over at Bet Online, the fastest and easiest way to get all your latest sports action. Dave, I know this Wake Forest team, you hate them since you know, the Donna Man. You were creation. I think you came, the first words that came out of your mouth were, I can't stand the Demon Deacons. Yes. Especially when you were born. I think that's, that's right. the correct way to put it, right? Um, but this isn't, like, I think the best way to put it, this isn't the Wake Forest that you grew up watching or most of the fan base grew up watching. Yep. This is actually a very, like, honestly, this is a very, very top-tier offense. The defense, it's okay. We've discussed the ad- ad- nauseum, and we had Cam Lemons to bro on earlier this week. And by earlier this week, I mean yesterday, <laughs> on yesterday's show, that the defense is improved, but also they've only played the likes of VMI, Liberty and Vanderbilt and still gave up 51 points to a Clemson team where DJU had a great game because they played wake, <laughs> but, be, but also because their secondary wasn't that great. So yeah. why don't we go into that Dave? What do you yeah. need to see from today's game? And also just how you see the game play, playing out? Well, this game could have taken two very different forms. It could have taken a form where it was rainy and windy and we emphasized running the ball down their throats. It was just, it would be a sloppy game. And I think our run game would have prevailed. Um, that's not the case, obviously good weather that totally changes the complexity of this game. Um, wake forest, I think is going to be, is going to try to do the same thing. They, they always do. They're going to try to do that little slow mash, throwing the ball all over the place. Uh, this is going to be most likely a high scoring game. Um, as much as I hate to say that. And And you can visibly see folks on this, but if you're not watching this on YouTube, you can visibly see the pain on Dave's face right now when he says that. We're going to let me let me get this out of the way first. We're going to win this game. Um, and I'm like, supre- I'm supremely confident in that. Probably a 10, 15 point win. Um, but it, this is going to come down to our wide receiver play this game. I, I'm at the point where I don't wonder if Jordan Travis is going to be able to make all the throws he needs to. I think he's proven so far this year. Oh, yeah. If you, you can't question that anymore at this yeah, point, especially after I think Louisville, you can't at all. Right. He, he, he can make all the throws. The weather's perfect for him to do it. It's going to come down to the receiver play. Wake Forest is unimaginably bad at tackling like among the worst you'll see so you get the ball to our receivers in space um give micah Pittman the ball on short and intermediate routes and just let him break tackles he's really good at it go back and watch some film he's done it a few times already this year he's hard to bring down trey benson really hard to bring down give him the ball out of the flats and just let him go run someone over um johnny wilson they don't have anyone that can guard anyone like that clemson's bigger receivers had a field day against that secondary we have the tools here to do it as long as we can keep uh jordan travis upright and not running for his life which i think is very doable 
And as long as we're, you know, we're getting the ball to our receivers and letting them cook, I think this is going to be a easier victory than a lot of people are foreseeing, and especially easier than the w- adorable little Wake Forest media is saying. Everyone that works for Wake or talks about Wake thinks this is just going to be an easy win because FSU sucked the last two years. Wake sucked forever. Welcome to being good for like a minute and a half. Um, and that that's over. This is this is a game you win because you have the better players. Yeah. Um, for one, nice way to put it. Very nice way to basically take some shots at some Wake Forest fans. Like, listen, like I will agree with you a little bit. Some of the, the takes I've seen basically from Wake Forest media have been a little a little more basically like what I think I saw someone having a 20 plus point yeah. win over at, games just, over I, at halftime. They said, yeah, someone said game over at halftime. I think it was less John from two, four, seven, where I, like less is a very good journalist, but come on, man. Like it's, this isn't the same team. This isn't the same Jordan Travis. And also our defense is pretty good. solid. Our yeah. defense actually, I think is what I think the top three in the ACC actually for if, uh, actually for passer uh, passing yep. efficiency when it comes to defense, yep. whereas Wake Forest, I think is second at dead last. So, this is definitely going to be a shootout overall. And to me, this goes down to, you're right. It's not Jordan Travis. It's the wide receivers. Yeah. Now, we've seen each and every single game that one new wide receiver kind of emerges. We had Ontario Wilson against LSU. Then we had Johnny Wilson against Louisville. Then you had, what's his name? Darian Williamson. Darian Williamson against BC. And now it's kind of, you're asking, like, who's going to be that guy for this week? And to me, poison. I think it's going to be Malik McClain. I think I Malik McClain, I think Malik McClain kind of has that frame and that build to kind of bully some of these uh the the defensive backs in the Wake Forest secondary. And to me, it's going to be between him. I keep saying Micah Pittman, and Micah Pittman, I think just might be just a tough guy that kind of like gets keeps moving the chains, kind of when you need a big first down or when you need a third down conversion, or as he was baptizing some line, poor linebacker at BC last week. So to me, it's going to come down to like you're saying the wide receiver play, and also if our defensive line can actually get penetration and get to Sam Hartman. The reason why that slow mesh is so effective is the offensive line gives him enough time to basically... Yeah. Sam Hartman's a very damn good QB. He's the best QB they've had in their history. He's a very, like I know Dave, you could joke and call him Rod Skinner 2.0, but he is actually a very solid QB because he puts the ball where only his wide receiver can catch it. Yeah. But he's effective that way because they give him enough time in the pocket. And to me, this defensive line, which I don't think Fabian Love is going to be playing. I know Jared Verse was just announced as a game-time decision. He will dress out for the game today, which will be huge. So we need to actually get towards the quarterback, get some pressure, because if you make him... If you pressure Wake Forest, Sam Hartman's not going to be able to be as, as effective. And to me, that kind of like stymies and stifles the entire offense. And quite frankly, I like Wake Forest is a good team, but that's more because their offense is here and their defense is down here. Right. And this is going to be a show me game for, I think, several position groups. Like you said, that slow mesh, the way you blow that up is just to get get the defensive line into the backfield quickly before they have a chance to make like methodical decisions. And I think we're going to learn a lot about the capabilities of this defensive line, which I've said a million times is is arguably the best in the ACC and among the best in the country. We're going to learn that in this game. I know Jared Verse may not be 100%, but we're still, and Fabian Lovett's out, but we're still going to learn a good bit about where this defensive line's at. But like you said, the big thing for Wake is obviously throwing the football with Sam Hartman. This defensive back room, we've talked a lot about our high hopes for this room. The names are there. The recruiting rankings are there. The flashes of talent and performance are there. Uh, it's like one of those rounds of golf where you hit some good shots. You just got to put it all together. If you can get guys stringing together con- consistent uh, plays where you're not getting burnt, and they've done a great job at that, our defense this year, not letting things get behind them. Everything's been kept in front of them this year. Now, Wake Forest can take advantage of that. I think they're probably fine dink and dunking as long as we're giving them five yards at a time. Who wouldn't be? Um, but I, I trust this defensive back room. I trust the defensive line to make their lives easier by adding some pressure. Um, and like I said, this is a show me game for Florida State. Obviously, it's 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 a heat check. So if if we're this four and team that's playing that is how we've been playing so far this year then Florida State should be the better team in this game and win. Um, jo- again, I, I think I said in our group chat this week, it's also kind of a show-me game for Jordan Travis. Like, yes, I trust him. Yes, he's proven it. Yes, he's on the national radar. But I, a lot of people pick Sam Hartman to, be the, Hartman to be the best quarterback in the ACC, and Jordan Travis wasn't really talked about in the top half. Now, No, but it was talked about in the bottom five. Right. Now Jordan Travis. We said that. A lot of people said that. We a lot of people are talking about Jordan Travis now as the number one quarterback in the ACC. 
good chance to go out there and really solidify that thought process. Um, Sam Hartman is a good quarterback, but I think Jordan Travis is developing into a special quarterback. And, you know, I'm not saying all else is equal. All else equal, I always say I'll take the better quarterback, the team with the better quarterback. I think that is Jordan Travis. Uh, but setting that aside, our defense is substantially better. Um, our wide receiver room, and I can't believe this is the case, I think is better than Wake Forest, and they have a good wide receiver room. I'm about to say it's close. It's actually like like, like I usually I would push back on some of your hyperbole, but this wide receiver room has proven that per PFF, number one in the country, and also because like there's like four to five different people, but also Wake Forest over the past few years, they also are extremely deep, especially with Jamal Banks and Donovan Green, actually basically, and also At Perry, who last year against us had ten catches and 155 yards. So please. Mark him the way you marked his car Roberson, but don't allow someone else because like Wake Forest does have some dudes. So yeah, Dave, if, oh, go ahead, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say BC had Zay Flowers, and we I thought we did a very good job with him. I thought Fuller schemed up a defense to take, not take him away, but limit his effectiveness in that game. I thought he did a great job with that, so I do trust Fuller to game plan. I mean, obviously in a way that's going to limit, not stop Wake's defense because that's, that's what you're hoping to do. I'm about to say that's the that's the best way to put it. You can only hope to limit and because you, you can't fully contain this Wake Forest offense because Sam Howard is very good, but also you kind of wish he would be very good because he's been at Wake Forest for I think basically when I was back in school. That's a joke, but he's actually been there for basically forever. The Roscar 2.0 joke is not a real joke, it's actually a pure pure factual fact. Ask Dave about that. Yep. So Dave, lastly before yep. we get out of here, give me as we always do, give me one player on offense, one player on defense that you need to see kind of step up or you think will step up in this game. And then give me a prediction. Your legitimate prediction. I don't want to hear a thousand to zero or sixty nine to four twenty, something like that. But what do you actually see how the see his game unfolding? Yeah, I I wish you hadn't said Malik McLean because that probably would have been my pick on the offensive side Even of the ball. We have the same, we've been the same one numerous times. It feels like he's due, and there's there's a lot of reasons for it. Obviously, we all know the talent's been there. He's flashed that plenty of times. It just hasn't all come together. Um, he's going to benefit a lot in this game, I think, from the attention on Johnny Wilson and Micah Pittman and Pokey Wilson. Uh, the attention is the heat's completely off of Malik McLean. Um, that's Darian Williamson benefited from kind of being the overlooked guy on the field. Uh, there's not a lot of tape on him, and I, I just don't think defenses were keyed on Darian Williamson. Just like I don't expect them to be on Malik McLean, notwithstanding his size. Clemson did a very good job, like I said, with that. You line Johnny Wilson up on one side, Malik McLean on the other, maybe Micah Pittman or Pokey Wilson in the middle, and that's going to be really tough for their defense to match up with that kind of size. So him on the offensive side of the ball, um, for sure. Defensive side, I'm 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 tempted to say McClendon. Um, I I think I think he he has showed that Jer there's a reason Jared Verse and him were listed as an or. I think he's had a lot of good moments this year where that show he's developing into a good player. Um, like I said, pass rush is going to be at a premium. Getting into the backfield and blowing up that slow mesh. Um, I have high hopes that he's going to go out there and make a name for himself like some others have on this defense this year. He has the talent. He has the tools. He showed he can do it. I think this is the game to put it together. And then prediction? 41-31 FSU. 41-31 FSU. Um, offensively, the, I'm not going to belabor the point. Malik McLean's already mine. My number two is because I've, we spoke with Kane Lemons, the bros are the best way to basically kind of stifle or somewhat com, not confuse, but hinder the slow mesh is not only the defensive line, but how your safeties play. And I tweeted out earlier this morning that I think this is a game where Akeem Dent kind of like showcases that basically on a national level, why he is him. Yeah. To me, that's a kid that five-star talent coming from South, from South Florida has a good first year, struggles the next two years, but then you see him coming on towards the end of last season. And then this season to me, I said in all our shows before that Akeem Dent to me by the end of the year will be the better safety between himself and Tammy Robinson. And so far, that's been proven correct. And to me, this is the game where you can have your marquee showcase, not like like we're saying, not contain, but stifle and limit the basically the somewhat air raid RPO of the slow mesh mm -hmm. and kind of minimize the damage. I think Akeem Dent will have that sort of game for themselves. And I actually wouldn't be surprised if he actually comes down with maybe a pick, maybe a turnover. I also wouldn't be surprised if you see him blitzing off the edge and two in a little you know, Rajal does kind of play. You see Malik Mustafa against uh, Clemson last week from way four. So to me, those are my two. And then this game, to me, I think it's a race to 40. We typically say 13 going on 30 on here, but this is a race to 40. I got 42 to 38 us primarily because I do think we're, we're probably going to be upset 
at the first half. I wouldn't be surprised, actually, if we're down by maybe a field goal at half because his offense is so damn good. But the one thing that Fuller ha- and Shan have proved to us, their second half adjustments are elite. So to me, this will be a game where let fine, let have them sh- showcase all their tape and all their big plays in the first half. But the second half is where this game's going to be won. We'll have the ball last. We beat them up. And to me, this will be the FSU team going 5-0, and going up to Raleigh, North Carolina next week, going to another 5-0 and team in NC State. And that's where game day is going to be at. And I'm actually very excited to see and FC team be five and zero. Absolutely, we're going to see MB five and zero. This is going to Wake's going to return to the pushover. They are, like I've said. Um, I I just want to say one last thing. I don't want to see a field goal attempt in this game by Florida State. I'm so serious. There's a reason I picked forty one because that's six touchdowns and missing an extra point. And I, I'm I just refuse to believe that we have forty two thousand students at FSU and we can't find a guy that can kick a football. So don't want to see it. Um, Jordan, get it get it going on fourth down, buddy. Love you. Win this one. We love you all, and folks. Thank you guys so much for being locked on. Send your first listen each and every single day, and always for the love and support. Please, if you can, don't forget five star reviews, either on our podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, or if you're to podcast from. And also, Dave, you know what to do on YouTube, right? Of course, Drake. Uh, if you like this video, like the video, uh, we would appreciate that. Uh, subscribe to the channel, ding the little bell at the top, turn on your notifications. It'll let you know when our videos drop. Leave us comments below. Tell us why you agree that Wake Forest is a doormat and the Vanderbilt of the ACC and why we're the better team in this game and should and will win. Thank you. God, I love you sometimes. I hate you sometimes, Dave, but I love you sometimes. But for Dave, this was Drake, and we'll see y'all on next time on Locked on Seminoles. Take care, everybody, and beat Wake. Go Noles, beat Wake. Baptize those nerds. Packed Oak. <laughs>